Hello, my name's Anna Christmas and I work in the Research and External Affairs team at Bowel Cancer UK. I'm really pleased to be joined by consultant clinical oncologist Mark Saunders, who works at the Christie Hospital in Manchester. Mark is also the co-chair uh, co of our Medical Advisory Board, and he'll be answering some questions about the coronavirus and bowel cancer. Thanks for joining me, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Thank you. I'm looking forward to you asking, asking me these questions. I get them all the time at, um, at work. At the moment, I'm at, I'm at home. I'm um, doing my emails at home. But actually, when I'm at work, I, I always get asked about the um, COVID vaccination. Is it safe and can we have it? So I'm pleased to um, talk to you today about this. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. So around 268,000 people in the UK are living with bowel cancer. And we've heard from many people in our community um, who want to know more about Seems like you say so um, I hope we can cover a range of these today yeah of course um, we're hearing really positive things as well about the rollout of the vaccines and we are of course happy that many people with bowel cancer are being vaccinated now um, new updates are coming out quite regularly so please keep an eye on these to make sure that uh, you know when you should be called for yours so our first question is uh, is the vaccine safe for people with bowel cancer, including people who are on active treatment such as chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or are due to have surgery? Yeah, um, my I personally feel it's definitely safe. Um, we, there's obviously been so many people have had the vaccination now, and I know um, that patients um, having uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy for bowel cancer um, might feel worried that are they a, a different group and it isn't safe for them, but it definitely is. And um, I think you have to look at the um, the benefits and the risks. The benefits of having the vaccination are so much greater um, in terms of trying to stop you getting COVID or at least stop it to you having the serious consequences of COVID. So the benefits are really great, whereas the risks um, I think are small. And certainly I've had the vaccination myself um, it um, made my arm a little bit sore um, for a day and I perhaps, um, I don't know, I felt perhaps a little bit hot that night, but it was minor. So I was really pleased and probably the same as you. I'm really pleased to see that loads of people are having the vaccination now and suddenly life is looking a little bit better that we'll all be let out hopefully soon um, because we're all going to be vaccinated. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's great to hear that it is uh, that the vaccine is safe um, for all these people with bowel cancer. Um, especially at the start, there were a, a reports of a small number of people having serious allergic reactions to the vaccines. Um, and some people obviously have a history of severe allergic reactions to specific foods or medicines. Um, is it safe for these people to have vaccines too? Um, again, um, I think we have to use the, the benefits and the risks uh, side of things. Um, I think with all things, um, I um, people are individuals, they're having different treatments. Some patients might have um, um, no particular risk of allergies. Some people might have lots of allergies. So I suppose the obvious thing is to speak to your um, treating clinician about it and make sure they're happy that you're having the vaccination. And certainly um, I would say yes to virtually everybody. Um, and um, if you do have um, serious um, um, allergies to certain things, for example, um, if you've had an allergy to the flu vaccination in the past, then I suppose you've really got to tell the people that are vaccinating you and they will decide um, and, and they're obviously trained to give the vaccine. And so they'll decide whether it's safe for you. Um, from experience, I haven't had anybody, even though I know people are allergic to penicillin, for example, um, they're allergic to bee stings um, and other things. I haven't had anybody that's had a severe reaction. And just to reassure people that when people are trained to give the vaccine, it looks pretty easy. All you do is just put a little dab in the arm, it's, it's, it's simple. But also they're trained, trained how to actually make up the vaccine. It's actually very important to make it up in the right way. And also they're trained what to do if you do get an allergy and what sort of tablets you might give or what sort of injections you might give if people get an allergy. So to come back to what I said at the start, um, definitely the benefits of having the vaccination far outweigh the risks. Uh, I would encourage everybody to have it but speak to your treating team and the vaccinating team if you're concerned. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that advice. So something else that our supporters um, would like a bit more clarity on is um, about who can have the vaccine. So some people have been diagnosed with bowel cancer but haven't started treatment yet, um, or they're having treatment breaks, or perhaps they've finished treatment um, and are having their follow-up appointments. So are these people able to have the vaccine too? Um, again, I, I keep saying yes to everything and I'm, I'm going to say yes again. I think they, if you're on treatment, 
um, you are um, slightly more susceptible to infections. A lot of the time, it's not as if you're, you have to hide away at home because you're so susceptible, because obviously you have a life to live as well and people want to go out and um, following the guidelines. And so um, I think the um, um, people, um, uh, if they're on treatment, um, yes, they should have the vaccine. I think um, if you're off treatment, people are often worried that they're not having um, uh, treatment, therefore they're not um, uh, going to get the vaccination or they want the vaccination. Um, I, I always class this group of people um, as um, going to have chemotherapy at some point, um, because um, um, if, if they're on a uh, we sometimes call it a treatment holiday or a gap or a time off treatment and often that can be a few months the chances are they'll be on chemotherapy again at some point in the in the um, coming months or um, or weeks or whatever and so I, I think it's best to be well prepared so if you can have the vaccination and have a good amount of antibodies and a good amount of t-cells in your body to fight any covid then that's great so i would say that whether you're on treatment or you're in gaps between treatment, you should still go and get the COVID vaccination. And um, um, if you, you're not obviously on a list to get it, then um, usually I recommend that people ask their GP and, um, or I've written to their general practitioner. And uh, so far, everybody's been a great help. I haven't had anybody come back to me to say the GP or the vaccinated team won't give them the vaccination. They've all had it. In fact, I'm seeing so many patients now that have already had the vaccination uh, and a few, if they haven't, speak to their GP and usually they get it done. So everybody's been working well together to get everybody vaccinated. That's really great to hear. And it's really great to hear that these people um, aren't being missed. And like you said, they can speak to their GP if they yeah. um, if they think they should be on that list. That's it. Fantastic. Um, and the UK government has recently announced that you know, if you are considered clinically extremely vulnerable, but you haven't been contacted by the NHS yet, perhaps by letter or by phone, you can now book an appointment for the vaccine um, online. And the details for these are on our website at bowelcanceruk.org.uk. Yeah, good, that's good to hear. Good. So um, the research says that, it's a research question, um, it says the vaccine may not be as effective for people who are on active cancer treatment because the treatment weakens our immune system, but it's still beneficial to have the vaccine. What does it mean when they say the vaccine is not as effective uh, for people who are on cancer treatment? I think it's um, um I think people worry that people um, who are on chemotherapy are um, have a lower immune system that they have a um, less ability to um, um, fight cancer or fight infections, but also uh, they have a, a reduced ability to actually develop the antibodies to fight COVID. So I think that's what they mean when they say that. Um, but if you look also at perhaps a similar group, a group that are even more at risk, the, the very elderly, as you know, the, um, um, the median age for people that are um, having severe problems from COVID are well into their 80s. Often the elderly are very um, immunosuppressed as well. They don't um, have such a good ability um, to um, build up an antibody um, response to vaccinations but that group also are benefiting from the vaccination when they're vaccinated and uh, whichever vaccine you have and I know there's all different stories that come out in the papers and I'm sure what I say now will be different in a month's time but generally the vaccinations are providing um, a, an immune response whether you're elderly or whether you're younger and are more immunosuppressed or whether you're younger and on chemotherapy or radiotherapy and again repeating myself the benefits and the risks. The benefits of having it are so much greater than the risks. And even if you don't get such a really good antibody response or a T cell response, um, well, even if you get some, that's better than none, really. And um, and hopefully that some, whatever that is, will stop you getting the serious consequences. And maybe you'll have a lesser attack of COVID that allows you to stay at home. Um, so yeah, again, everybody should have it. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, it's really important to um, yeah, lessen those, uh, your chance of having those more serious reactions to COVID, absolutely. Um, and finally, our last question is, um, do people who've had uh, a vaccine still have to shield? And if so, why? I think, um, again, that's another thing that um, we'll know more about over the, over the coming months. 
I know we keep thinking of a vaccine and we keep seeing these lovely tables coming out from um, the government um, showing the number of vaccines we have. And I, at this date, it's 15 million. I'm sure next week it might be 20 and keep moving up. So it's really nice to see that graph going up and up and up. But that's the first vaccination. Um, and as everybody will know, you need two vaccinations. So I think really that when you have the first one, the hope is that you are reasonably protected and maybe you won't get the serious consequences, but you're not completely protected from the effects of COVID. Um, I would say once you get the second one, then your protection is much, much greater. And hopefully by that time, we'll have more um, knowledge, whether it's from the UK um, or whether it's from places, for example, we keep reading about Israel at the moment that have vaccinated so many people. Um, we'll hear from the world about um, the benefits of one vaccination and then the second one and the amount of protection you get. And the hope is that it will be way up there in the 80s to 90s percent. And that means that life suddenly can look better again. And as the same, I want to go out even for, a, I don't know, a restaurant or, a, or a, a bar or something like that. I'm sure all patients with cancer want to get out and bounce as well. And it's really important they do because um, I know there's obviously um, a um, want to protect yourself from COVID, but there's a psychological effect as well. And actually getting out to see a family, getting out to do something more normal can make people feel so much happier. So um, I would say that one vaccination is great. Two is even better. And I think when we have two and more knowledge comes along, I think spring will come, summer will come and things will improve and we'll all be out and about and hopefully at some point, we'll be seeing more people in clinics without masks. That would be great because it's always difficult when you've got a mask on. Um, for example, if you make a, a joke to try and lighten the situation, they can't see your lips move, then it's very <laughs> difficult. And, um, and it's sometimes difficult talking and people can't hear you completely with masks on. So it'd be lovely, yeah, protection, we're out and about, less masks and things go back to normality. And I, I, I'm an optimist. I really hope by the summer, a lot of that will be happening. Oh, I do really hope for that too. I can't wait to go to a restaurant too. <laughs> um, that's fantastic. Thanks so much for answering all those questions for us. Um, and thank you for your time today, Mark, um, and your expertise and insight. I'm sure it will be incredibly reassuring for bowel cancer patients and their loved ones to hear this information from you. Um, it's been a really useful discussion. Well, thank you for inviting me. And obviously, if you need an update at any point and um, things change in a six weeks or eight weeks then be delighted to join you again thank you oh thank you very much thank you um and so just to sum up if, if you'd like any further information around coronavirus and the vaccines um please do visit our website um there's also the latest information on the government and nhs websites um so please do check those out for where you live and for anyone needing support details on how we can help you are on our website too which is bowelcanceruk.org.uk Thank you very much for listening.